Hello and welcome. We are with Mr. Nadir Godrej of Godrej Industries. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. How has the CEO's role evolved uh, uh, given the VUCA environment? The uh, CFO's role has evolved with the VUCA environment because there are a lot of storms out there and he is, has to protect the company from these difficult situations. Also, the CFO's role has evolved to give a lot of support to the CEO. In fact, the CFO is now seen almost like a deputy CEO. He is held responsible for many of the things and he has to help the CEO in the growth ag agenda as well as protecting the company from the downside. Okay, how uh, important uh, a role does governance play you know, in, in this changing and volatile environment? Governance is uh, very important because many companies have been brought down uh, by uh, failures to have good governance and the CFO has a big role in ensuring that there is good governance. Unfortunately, good governance does not come from laws. It comes more from a culture of good governance and the CFO has a very important role in inculcating this culture. Okay, I want to speak to you about uh, Indian companies uh, in this VUCA environment. What do you think are the three biggest risks that Indian companies face today? Uh, the risks for Indian companies are uh, have been in the past high global commodity prices, unprecedentedly high prices, and India is a big importer of commodities. Then debt, Indian companies in the boom times took on a lot of debt, mm. and now that becomes uh, difficult to service, particularly with the very high interest rates in India. Okay, there's, there's a growing concern over Indian companies being over leveraged. Uh, how valid are those concerns and, uh, and, and do you think that Indian companies uh, should now start paring down that debt that they've been growing? Uh, several Indian companies are indeed over leveraged and of course uh, many of them are trying to bring down their debt but um, most probably by selling certain projects and monetizing that and that is on but in a difficult environment it's difficult to do. Okay, there's also a concern about uh, uh, Indian companies being over leveraged on account of more M&As, particularly more overseas M&As. Yes, um, uh, particularly M&As done at the time of the boom right. in 2006 and 2007, uh, wherever they were done uh, have proved uh, very dangerous for the companies that did them. And the boom, you pay, uh, you pay very high prices and then the businesses don't do uh, at all well and you, uh, you take on debt to do those acquisitions so it's a double whammy. Okay, what about uh, foreign currency risk? You know, where do you think Indian companies stand as far as uh, 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 the amount of risk they've taken as far as foreign currency loans are concerned? Right, the costs of hedging are very high in India and uh, often borrowers have internal hedges. So if mm -hmm. you have an internal hedge, hedge it is entirely reasonable mm -hmm. not to cover the risk. Also, uh, Indian inflation, uh, Indian interest rates are higher mainly because of inflation. And Indian inflation is not really inflation. It is really the fact that our consumer price index has many commodities in it. And even in manufactured goods, the commodity uh, proportion of the costs is very high. So uh, as there was a global commodity price boom, uh, first in 2006 and 2007 and then when that fell it again resumed from 2009 onwards we saw a lot of high inflation in India. Currently global commodity prices are falling. Crude oil has fallen substantially. Vegetable oils and cereals because of biofuels are highly correlated with crude oil and uh, metals prices have also fallen all commodity prices have probably fallen in tandem because the Chinese economy slowed down. China imports 30 to 40 percent of all commodities. Not only did China slow down, it over imported commodities because uh, people sometimes imported commodities in China merely to get finance, merely to get dollar finance. There have been a few scandals regarding that. The Chinese government has cracked down on that and so currently China is even importing less commodities than it needs because those stocks are being run down. So I think that uh, the commodity prices falling is very beneficial to India. Hopefully the RBI will reduce interest rates soon. Market interest rates are already coming down even in advance of RBI action. 
because uh, uh, businesses are not borrowing and businesses are actually putting some of their surplus funds into the banks. This is bringing down interest rates. So I think the investment cycle will also kick off uh, now that interest rates are beginning to fall. Dollar interest rates are very low, so it's very tempting for businesses to borrow in dollars. And um, clearly, if they're exporting businesses, they have an internal hedge. But even if they import substitution businesses, there is a strong internal hedge. So it is much safer to, uh, to borrow at 3% in dollars than at 11 or 12% in Indian rupees. If the rupee weakens, you're likely to get inflation in India and you'd still be able to service your debt. So then what's your call on the rupee? My call on the rupee is largely based on the fact that the RBI has done a wonderful job in stabilizing the rupee and I feel it will continue to do so. Uh, it certainly has, seems to have the intention of doing so. So I would uh, argue that there will be a stable rupee. That will itself will help to bring down inflation. Uh, the only situation in which the rupee will weaken is if the RBI runs out of ammunition to maintain a stable rupee or the Fed suddenly raises interest rates and capital flows uh, drastically decline in India. But my best guess is for a fairly stable rupee. Okay. Uh, the, what's your call on China? You know, many people are predicting that there could be a hard landing for China. If there is one, what is the impact that it could have on India? Uh, it, it, the, it, while India benefits from growth in the U.S. economy, because we are big exporters to the U.S., we do not benefit much by growth in the Chinese economy. Uh, we benefit from slower growth in China to the extent that commodity prices fall. Uh, I feel that even if uh, China doesn't have a hard landing, the way its economy evolves, it will be less commodity intensive with or without growth. And with uh, low growth, obviously, it will be it, it will import much less of commodities, and that will be a big boon to India, because India's uh, current account deficit is largely due to high uh, commodity prices right. for crude oil, vegetable oil, and many other things that India imports. Uh, uh, so you know, there's good news uh, for India that could be on the anvil, uh, but everybody is still concerned about uh, the you know the capex cycle as well as the investment cycle because uh, uh, a lot of people are still saying that the investment cycle has not really recovered in that sense when are you expecting this investment cycle to reverse there is excess capacity in india uh, some successful businesses are constantly investing uh, small amounts also uh, there are big uh, productivity increases de-bottlenecking so small investments can actually give you more capacity so in the beginning, all these low-hanging fruit will be taken over. And I expect it will take six to nine months for an investment cycle to really take off. But clearly, this will be accelerated if interest rates indeed do come down. So uh, finally, what's your call on growth rate, interest rates? I'm quite optimistic about Indian uh, growth rate. And... Uh, many people think that in 2016, India's growth rate will be somewhere between 6 and 7%. But if uh, uh, something like GST comes in by fiscal year 2016, we may cross 7%. We could be growing faster than China uh, with good policies. And I would urge the government to introduce reforms carefully, but sooner rather than later. When do you think the GST will actually roll out? Uh, some, uh, I, uh, probably April 16, but if it comes in April 15, it will be very, very beneficial for the economy. All right, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.